by conditional statements. We're going to start with an if-then statement. If it's a triangle, then it has three sides. We're going to take our if-then and write the converse of it. If it has three sides, then it's a triangle. Now let's talk about the truth values for these statements. The first statement has a truth value of true, because if it's a triangle, then it does have three sides. That's true. Triangles, every single triangle has three sides. The second statement, if it has three sides, then it's a triangle. Also true, because the only things that have three sides are triangles. That means that our original statement and our converse are true, and when that happens, we have a special case, and we can actually write them as one statement. Remember, the original and contrapositive are logically equivalent, so that means that if the original is true, so is the contrapositive, and same thing with the converse and inverse. So really, all four of our statements are true. All right, so what's a biconditional? A biconditional is like an if-then statement. It's a conditional statement, but it works both ways. So we write a biconditional like this, and notice that arrow, it's a double arrow, whereas before for a conditional we only had a single arrow. So we could read this either way. We could read it as if p then q, or we could read it as if q then p, because they both work, they're both true. Instead of having to state them both, we can write it a different way. We can write it with if and only if. So the way that you would read this one is p if and only if q. So instead of writing both of the statements that we have up on the screen right now, we could combine them into one statement, and it would be, it's a triangle if and only if it has three sides. And so if we kind of break that down and think about what that means, it's a triangle if it has three sides. So yeah, it's a triangle only if it has three sides. It means that the only way that something can be a triangle is if it has three sides. So we got both of our if-then statements, our original and our converse, into that one biconditional statement. It's a triangle if and only if it has three sides. But if and only if take a long time to write out, it's a lot of letters, and it shows up often enough in math that we gave it its own symbol. So instead of writing if and only if, we could write it like this, IFF. -F. So you don't read that as if, you read it as if and only if. The thing to remember about biconditionals is that you can only write an if-then statement as a biconditional if the original and the converse are both true. That's important. If one of them is false, then you cannot write a biconditional. The other thing that's important to remember about biconditionals is that every really good definition is actually a biconditional statement. So if we think about defining the word, let's say dog, a dog is a small furry animal. Okay, so if it's a dog, then it's a small furry animal. Perfect. Now let's do the converse. If it's a small furry animal, then it's a dog. Not true, because we could have cats or gerbils or maybe a baby brother or sister dressed up in a bear outfit. I don't know. So in that case, Defining a dog as a small furry animal, that's not a good definition because it doesn't work as a biconditional. The converse is not true. So we need to find another way to define it, which would take way too long for this video. And this is the end. He's okay. My finger is okay too.